Okay, my college prep friends, here we go. Um, this is the assignment for the what I'm calling right now Google Drive number two. This is when we're going to set up a, a spreadsheet on Google Drive to keep track of our con progress, all our practice, and our SAT scores, and our practice tests. And I'm going to try to be more quick and to the point because some of you guys are saying, hey, these videos are getting too long. So here's what we're going to do. First thing is let's go and start a spreadsheet. So I'm going to open up a new tab. I'm going to go, since I'm, I'm already logged into Gmail, I'm just going to go here and go to Drive. If you don't have that, you have to log in first. So I come to Drive, and I'm going to say New Spreadsheet. Google Sheet, they call it. A new Google Sheet. All right, pops up. Now let's give it a title right away so we can save it and all that good stuff. I'm going to call it Contract Contractor Richter for me. So what I want to do is a couple things. First, we want to just kind of keep track of our each practice test. So let's set up a, a, a little thing. I'm just going to kind of off the top of my head what may work the best. I guess it would work good to have the date, approximate date. Now, most of us, we took that. It doesn't have to be exact, but it was the end of September. So I'm just going to put like 925, okay? That's like basically when a lot of us started around there. Um, and to make my stuff look better, I'm going to center it. You don't, you know, you don't have to do that, but I like that more centered. Okay, cool. Now the SAT. Let's say the date. And how about the um, fulls to score total score? No, we should do it like break it up, right? Math, reading, and then total. And so now you have to go to your Khan account. I'm already logged in. Log in, go to your practice page. And hopefully you did this before when, when you did the survey. But if you roll down and you say test scores, you may have to say show scores, display your scores. So there's my math was 390, my reading and, and writing was 380 for 770. So 390 and 380. 390, 380, 770. Maybe I should make that better. What do they call it? RW math. Why isn't it doing capital? That's better. Uh, maybe make that all centered. So then what we'll do is when each time we do another practice, we'll add to that and then we'll be able to see as it's going up each day, hopefully. So that's the first piece. The second piece I want to try to do is I want to keep track of how many um, problems we're doing, practice problems we're doing a week so you guys can keep an eye on that. And um, when you go to your con, I found this is pretty nice. This practice schedule, it's showing you, it's kind of hard to see because the, the, the video recording is not super high clarity, but there's a little calendar here. And if you roll over, it tells you each day how many questions you did, um, how many practice, and like what the goal is. Now, if you're not showing this, you may, there's a few you have not set up your practice schedule. So if you haven't done that, then do that right now. Um, if you've already done that, like, skip ahead for a minute or two in the video because I'm going to just show people if they haven't set up the practice schedule I'm going to edit mine to show you what it looks like so if you haven't done your practice schedule the first thing is choose your test date March 7th is what we all chose you're actually going to take it a little bit later than that but we'll put that if you want them to email your reminders I said no because I'm just going to do it every day anyways in class then it's telling me um, it's recommending that we take six full practice exams and there's really no way we're going to be able to do six before then, but we're going to probably try to do four. So, but we're just going to, we just left that part there. That's okay. We're not going to modify it. But now this part here, you should make this part real. So some of you guys don't come on Thursday and Friday. So whichever day you come, you should select that. And what we did is we chose 30 minutes a day, which puts us an average of two hours a week. And you notice that they're recommending if you want to go hardcore, they said about three to five hours. So, you know, we're somewhere around there. We're, we're a little bit less than hardcore. So that's two hours a week. Okay, cool. Now then when you do that, you should have the schedule up. And then you can see each week. So what I'm thinking we should do, now people who already have that, I'm joining again. We should set up just by the week. So I'm gonna leave this block, box up here, little blank spaces for future practice tests. 
And now this is our, um, our, day, our weekly practice, let's say. Let's not track it every day. It's too much, but weekly. So I'll do it by like the start of the week. So let's start it with last week, which was the week of September 24th. So I'm going to put the week of 924. And then the next week was. Looks like it was 10 1 and 10 8. Okay, we got the idea. So it was 10 1, 10 8, 10, what would be 8 plus 7, 15. So each week, how many total problems did we get? Did we get done? Now the week of 924, we did a lot of problems because your practice test counts. So that's cool. So what you're gonna do is do a little math and just add up. See, each day it told me I did zero questions on Monday, zero on Tuesday, zero on Wednesday. But then I did 154 questions on Thursday because that's when I did that practice test. And so 154 total for me on that week. And so you just add yours up. And then the following week, 10 1, 0, 0, 0. You know, I haven't done any yet. <laughs> but um, hopefully, you know, by Friday or Thursday, I'll do a few, you'll do a few. This week has been shallow. You know, we've been doing not a lot of practice testing because we've been doing the web stuff. But the goal is that we, you basically want to try to do 80 questions per week. So I should write that down, what the goal is. The goal is 80 questions, 80, 80. That's what um, Khan recommends. So even if you don't set your practice schedule up, that's what it should be come up. They're saying about do about 80, about 20 questions per day, and we're scheduled to practice four days a week. So we wanna try to average 80 goal, 80 a week. And one more thing I forgot to mention. For your, a a your SAT, we wanna set a goal I did a little research and I found out that there's um, people who pay money to take these SAT thing, you know, these courses that will help you boost your score. They will guarantee you a, a boost of 200 points. So they're quite confident that if you, and they think they say about t two months, if you study, if you take it seriously and you work hard for two months and they're saying like basically the same as us, about a couple hours a week, that you could, you can raise your score by plus 200 and they'll guarantee it actually. So they'll like give you your money back if you don't. So then what you can do is set a goal is whatever your first score was, your goal is to try to raise it by at least 200. If you wanna be ambitious, 250. So I'm gonna to try to raise mine up to 1,000. I'm gonna be a little ambitious. See, it's, it's a realistic goal. It's, it's just kind of, it's kind of nutty if you just like pick a random number back. I'm gonna raise it 500 points. It's like, where, where did that come from? So that's actually kind of a realistic goal based on, you know, this company has done a lot of research. And you, on your first test, you may have scored a little lower because you just, you know, the testing environment wasn't that ideal. Maybe you weren't that focused on one day or something. So you may adjust your goal after the second practice exam. You take it a little more seriously, then maybe you want to boost your score from that. So you'll see. But for now, at least set it to be 200 points higher than your total. That's your final goal for the final SAT. That's where we should hopefully get it to. So I tried to keep it short, but um, hey, you know me. So that was it on Google Spreadsheet. You have these two things. Now the final step is to sh let me see it. So here's what we're gonna do. It's a little different. I don't want you to send me emails and stuff because it's like hard for me to find it. Instead, if you go to share, this is cool, get a shareable link. Cool? So get that link. Anybody with the link can view it. So you don't want people that, I'm not, I don't need to edit it, unless you wanna let me edit it, but that's okay, just view it. So I'm gonna copy that link. Now, to, you're gonna put it on your homepage. So pop back over to Dreamweaver. <laughs> I just happen to have mine opened up. Um, you open your Dreamweaver up, go to your page, open up your homepage, 
And now, hopefully, if you haven't done Dreamweaver uh, 3 yet, if you haven't made this homepage, then do that first. Got to pause. But now I can do this. Con um, progress. Really, it's progress and goals. Spreadsheet. It's a nice name. Except I don't know how to spell. So, to, whoa. to link it, you highlight it, right? Remember how to link stuff to websites? You come down to link and you right click and you paste that link in. Boom. And now you save it. And the final step, very important, you have to get it uploaded onto your website. So you're gonna probably, you can try to connect and see if you get lucky, if it remembers your username and password, but I know from some people, the SC doesn't work. So I'm gonna have to go to manage sites Edit. I'm just. This is just happening for most of us on Windows 10 now, apparently too. You're gonna have to go and put your username back in. And guess what? I forgot my new username. Oh well. Now I'm gonna come over to X10. I gotta sign in to X10, and then I can get my username. So you may have to do that too. And you know how X10 can be. It can be a little bit slow, but that's okay. We're patient. <laughs> That's a little lesson, by the way, is if you have a little bit extra time in your hands, don't, you know, enjoy it, basically. Just enjoy it. The fact that you're breathing is good. So there's my username, Richter C. One of these days I'll remember that. You probably, your brains probably are better than me. You can memorize it. All right, and then my password, that part I had to memorize. Hopefully I, messed, I didn't mess it up. I'm going to test it. Oh, yeah. And now I can actually connect. And now I connected. Now I can upload this. Put it. Put dependent files. Remember, dependent files are pictures. I'm just gonna say yes, even though I don't have any. And then I want to go. Final step. I want to actually go to my web page. Make sure that actually worked. Now remember, it's. Oh, look! It showed up. I didn't have to refresh. A lot of times you have to refresh a few times, but there it is. I'm gonna click it, and voila. Bada -da -bing, bada boom I got it all it's perfect it only took me 12 minutes that's not too bad uh, it may take you a little longer if you want to get a little fancier add colors in and stuff play around a little bit you could but so basically we're keeping track of two things like one thing that would be nice is to put, uh, put a little uh, background color on the heading I always like to do like a soft gray that looks good and um, if anybody thinks of what else we could add to this or if I come up with an idea, I'll, I'll um, we can add to it later. But for now, I think this is great. So this is a really good little thing, and um, it's a powerful thing. If you're still listening, the, I'll tell you they've done a lot of different research on how to help um, students grow and stay engaged. And of all the different things, this is the to keep track of your own progress is the number one technique or strategy that helps people stay motivated it's the number one of all of them just to just to keep track of your own growth you see it and that helps you stay with it so it's that's why i thought hey why not do that be good um so there you go namaste my friends have a great day